I'd love to start with how you personally became interested in nutrition. Mm. This story goes back to my early childhood, actually. My dad's a professor of physiology. And, you know, as far back as I can recall, when I would come home or if I would jump into his car, there would be scientific papers printed out, spr- sprawled everywhere. <laughs> I'd have to like shift we've got them. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I'd have to shift them to get into the car or if we were having dinner, I'd have to shift them off the table. And, you know, at that stage as a kid, I didn't really understand what those studies actually were speaking to or what they meant. But, you know, I saw that my dad took them very seriously and there was bits highlighted and squiggled and he would, I guess, educate me from an early age around the role of science and and how we can use science to kind of better navigate the world, better uh, make better choices and how we use science to reduce uncertainty. That's what we're doing. You know, we have intuition and we have hypotheses and then we use a scientific method to test that. And so from a very early age, I found that fascinating and knew that I wanted to explore some field or realm of science, you know, when I was old enough to go out and start a career. So I started my career as a physiotherapist I was working uh, in Australia with professional athletes and I did that for a number of years and then started getting very interested in nutrition. And at that stage, my understanding of nutrition was influenced by society, culture. I was you know, working out so you have locker room talk, all, all the things, right? And my brother at you know a certain point in time when I was in my mid-20s came to me and said, he was coming to stay with me in Sydney and said, just to give you a heads up, I've changed my diet a little bit. And he'd come across some information that was looking at cardiovascular disease and diet and spoke to the benefits of reducing animal foods in the diet. Now, I was very resistant to that idea believe it or not. (laughs) I was eating a lot of steak. I had a a kind of very much what I would describe as a gym kind of bro bodybuilding style diet. Not a lot of diversity, a lot of meat, sweet potatoes, broccoli kind of thing. So I was resistant to that. And with my undergraduate training in science, I thought I'll go into the literature and try and prove my brother wrong. (laughs) And, you know, very quickly getting in and looking at the the published literature on nutrition, I realized how confusing it is. You can find a study pretty much to support any position. Right. And so I realized that I actually wasn't able to decipher this and make sense of it. And that encouraged or inspired me to go back to university and I did a master's in nutrition science. And with this purpose of, you know, I was very curious about this. I wanted to develop the skills and to be able to better help the people that I was working with at that stage, athletes. And I did that and and went on this, you know, long journey of discovery and understanding how nutrition science works and all of the ins and outs with regards to study design and quality and the things that we need to think about when we're looking at literature in order to interpret it accurately. And yeah, that kind of, I guess, led to me starting my podcast and then sitting down and interviewing domain-specific experts so I could kind of delve deeper into different aspects of of nutrition. And, you know, today I kind of find myself in this position where I actually just see myself as a synthesizer of information. I'm sitting down and speaking to a lot of different experts and I am reading the peer-reviewed literature and I'm just trying to make that information more accessible to the to kind of every, everyday person that has a very busy life style and doesn't have the time to kind of develop the skills to go into the, the literature themselves. 